and welcome back to another edition of the Warren Files. Uh, it's been a while since we've had Chris on, so we decided we should probably get him on his uh, on the show that his foundation runs. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I, honestly, I'm excited. I, you know, it's been a long time since I've been on the show, and um, I'm especially excited this evening because we've got these wonderful people, and I get to uh, share whatever information they want to learn about. Yeah, I definitely, I was like, Okay, so Chris and I talk quite a bit. So, like, how how do I even interview you anymore? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, well, let's open it up to people that follow the page. And and um, after talking to them in the green room, I think this is going to be a fantastic night. I was, this was either the greatest idea I've had or the worst. I wasn't sure what it was going to be yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a good idea. <laughs> so I'm sure um, it is. I'm gonna. You said you had a. I'm gonna introduce. We have Ashley with us from from Virginia. Uh, Corey is from Nevada, and Mary is, did she say Brooklyn? I, she was in I'm Brooklyn from New York. Originally. Okay, yeah. so Mary is from New York. Yes, I should have known by the accident. Yes, yes, that's right. correct. <laughs> so, but anyway, Chris wanted to tell a story before we, we get into you three ladies asking questions. This is going to be great. I'm going like, to have the night off. I'm just going to sit back and, and watch. I'm you know, it, I, sit in the living room. I, I've got to apologize to everyone. I mean, it has been a very long time since I've been on. I, I love this program. I started eight years ago. And um, now I'm just so proud that it's become a place where many people share what they know about the foundation. Or, I mean, about the paranormal and their viewpoints, because, you know, there are an awful lot of people out there that give really crappy information. So we vet them. We know that we're dealing with really good people and we're giving you the best we can. Having said that, I am currently on an island in Brazil called Florianopolis. It's after 10 o'clock at night. And I have been uh, trying to stay awake because last night at 3.15 in the morning, uh, I had trouble going to sleep. I hadn't even fallen asleep yet. My bedroom door opens up. I open my eyes and there's this naked black woman looking down at me from above the bed. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, because I, I have a friend um, that travels with me, but she was with her boyfriend last night. And I was thinking, why is she in my bedroom naked at 3.15 in the morning? And when did she come home? And then I looked more closely and I realized, wait a minute, that's not her. And this person doesn't look quite human. And then, now I had thought my eyes were open. And then I opened them again and she was gone. What makes it even more interesting is... At the same time, my friend was having the same experience with her boyfriend on the other side of town, getting visited by this same entity. Now, she had had a dream. Now, she never tells me her dreams. But this one she told me about last week. And as soon as she started telling me about it, I realized what she was dreaming about. She is not from Brazil. She's from Venezuela. She had no idea what she was talking about. But 
she said she was in a restaurant and there was a coffin at her feet and a skeleton in it. And for some reason, she started talking to it. And then it was a black man with beads and beadwork and a, a dress, a uh, big dressing around his uh, shoulders and chest and something on his head. And <clears throat> he got up and he took her hand and he said, come with me. And they went out and they went into a restaurant. He turned his back and all of a sudden he was a woman dressed in green. And they had started to eat. He turned again and it was this black man with the bare chest. And he said, now come with me. And they got on an airplane and he said, be careful. Something's going to happen, but I will protect you. And the, wind, the doors blew open on the plane and he grew into a giant, wrapped him, his, her in his arms and carried her out of the plane, walking on the sky. And I knew immediately that she was dreaming about something called the Orishas. The Orisha are very important to Brazilian culture. They are an Afro-Brazilian amalgamation of Catholic or Christian um, saints and, and Jesus with African deities. And they manifest now as nature spirits. And she's dreaming about them. So I have a very strong feeling that when I move back to Colombia, January 2nd, she won't be coming with me. I think she's meant to stay in uh, Brazil. Why this visitation happened last night? Well, that's probably why I only got an hour of sleep last night because I couldn't figure it out and I really wanted to. So I'm half awake uh, and I apologize for that. Do we do we need to get this involved? The holy water? No, no, no. Okay. there's nothing evil in, involved here. It was, she wasn't particularly friendly, um, but she was not threatening at all. Well, if that would have happened to me, I definitely would have got the holy water out and started dousing. <laughs> well, I, I used the white light. Or the I gun. Do that. <laughs> so that's that's an interesting story. So you've, well, I'm not even going to ask you questions. The whole purpose of this was to let Ashley and Corey, and, and I hope Mary comes back. So Mary, if you're listening, um, just hit the link again, and we'll try and get you back in here. Because I, you know, I wanted, like I said, I wanted, you know, just fans of the page or followers of the page to to be the ones that direct the show so let's go ahead and start with ashley hi chris okay so i like to start by asking you know obviously you were trained and learned from legends ed and lorraine but i would like to know personally from you what was your first experience where you personally saw and knew that the paranormal was in fact there and real like what was your oh my god moment well, my first case was my, my oh my God moment. Mm -hmm. But even before my first case, and that was when I was 16, when I was 14, I was with my grandparents. And I guess was, that was my first oh my God moment because they were doing an, a TV interview with one of those PM magazines uh, that used to exist. And they the interviewer took my grandparents and a local reporter and myself to this house that was reportedly haunted. We were not allowed to go inside the house. Now the local reporter had been working on a story about the house. And while my grandmother stood out front in front of this house, talking about this apparition of a heavy set man with a bloody apron and a butcher's knife and the smell of rotting, flesh coming up from underneath the sink and all of this other stuff. The reporter who has not yet written his story is showing me his notes of all the things that have been reported about this house. And I'm like, oh my God, my grandmother's amazing. Mm -hmm. So that, that was my first oh my God moment. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Just as a side note too, I want everybody to know, um, we're going to do an, a, a side show. We're going to test an app tonight. So I'm just going to let this, this spirit talker app run. We're not going to ask it any questions. 
and then I'm going to tell you at the end of the show what all comes up. And then, you know, this is going to lead into a video that we're going to put on our YouTube channel about, you know, some of the apps and the equipment. So, sorry. Here I thought I would be the sideshow. Well, <laughs> I mean, you can be if you want. Let's see if I can put some graphics like a little clown hat on you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So Corey, Corey, what what's your first question? What do you got for Chris? So my question is is they have, you know, I've read about tulpas and how it's energy that manifests into what is now folklore for most of us. Um I read something where your your grandfather um investigated with someone else down in Kentucky and about Sasquatch. And he said, eh, I think it's a tulpa. What's your opinion on that? Because my, you know, I think of them as interdimensional beings, possibly. We don't know. It's, it's you know, out of the normal. <clears throat> but can well, people really manifest those tulpas to the point where they're seen all over the world? Well, I'm going to answer that in two different ways. Um, first, my grandmother communicated with Bigfoot down mm-hmm. there. So she said that this is a real living thinking being. It's peaceful and it just wants to be left alone. So she felt something completely different. Now, tulpas and egregores, same thing. Also, um, a good explanation for most poltergeist phenomena. These are thought manifestations that take on a life of their own. Uh, I certainly have found in my experience and you know as people may may or may not know i've lived in 96 places around the world i have seen that things manifest differently in different cultures based on folklore and cultural beliefs spiritual beliefs so yeah i absolutely believe that these elementals as well as demons uh, are can easily be explained as tulpas or egregores. These are spirits created by our energy that take on a life of their own and then can wreak havoc. They can actually go out and do harm. They they're very real. They're not um, they're not just something of the imagination. Mm-hmm. We have extraordinary power. And if we learn how to use it properly, like Tibetan monks, for instance, do, they can create the tulpa of a Siberian tiger in the middle of their monastery to chase down the young novitiates who are making too much noise. And then it just disappears when they want it to. I do so have a question. Absolutely. I do have a question that's tied directly into her, to Corey's question. So I, I think that I've heard you say that you believe that that's what Annabelle is. Yes. And, yeah. So that the actual owner in in the roommate actually created the entity that ended up haunting Annabelle. Yes. Especially once the medium came up with the backstory and created a whole mythology yep. of it. And when my grandmother came upon it, given her own spiritual beliefs, she could feel the negative energy. And she felt that, yes, this is demonic. And because my grandfather believed that no human spirit could inhabit a doll, that God would not allow that, he also believed that this had to be demonic. And Tati, absolutely, we attract the energy that we desire, but we do it by putting that same energy out into the universe. My grandmother used to say, like attracts like. And I have found if you are in a negative headspace as an investigator, if you're depressed or having a rough day or angry, do not go on an investigation. It is irresponsible and dangerous to the people you're supposed to be there serving. I have a piggyback on that comment on what you just said. So let's say you have somebody comes to you and they want they want to start investigating. They're young and they're fresh and they don't know anything about the paranormal. Where would you tell them to begin? I tell them to learn a lot first because the truth is I don't believe in paranormal unity. I think Mm -hmm. the idea that, for instance, you want to be a surgeon, so I'm just going to hand you a scalpel. Well, that seems a little insane. Um, 
and we are dealing with people's lives. So learn psychology, learn quantum physics. And then, I hate to say it, but go check out the Warren files on YouTube because that information I know you can trust. Mm-hmm. You know, um, even my grandparents' books, some of them are good, some of them are absolute crap because they didn't write any of them. Right. You know? um, and even the ones that are good, like the Demonologist, which is often used as a textbook in a lot of paranormal classes. Mm-hmm. Um, no, because as good as it is, it was written to terrify. It was written to titillate as well as inform. Mm-hmm. And we need something else. And I'm working on that something else right now. Oh, yay. I, I think I would I think I would add to that too. It's it's sometimes almost easier to tell them what not to watch. I mean like they need to watch more more Lloyd Auerbach as mm-hmm. opposed to Sam and Colby or you know some of these YouTube or ghost adventures or, or shows like that. There's yeah. we can always tell the people that apply to the foundation that their education has been through YouTube and TV shows. We can always oh, yeah. tell those people that apply <laughs> to be oh, yeah. So. Get with a reputable team with a good reputation. Yeah, yeah. Um, come to us, ask us for recommendations for teams. We've got people out there that you can work with, you know, mm-hmm. and you may not be a member of the foundation, but you might be a member of one of our members' teams, you know, and then learn from them and then eventually join us. We have plenty of people that do that. Mm-hmm. One of our responsibilities in the foundation, one of our goals, is to educate the next generation of researchers. But this isn't a hobby. Right. And it shouldn't be treated as a hobby. This is not for fun. Hell, I don't even like the paranormal. I don't do this because it excites me. I do this because of the bad groups out there. I do this because it's needed. It's a responsibility. Am I alive? Corey. Yes. You're up. Yeah, and I heard <laughs> somebody is, an is that Mary? Yeah. No, no, no. Um, it's a spirit you heard, talker. You heard our spirit talker. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. It's, it's very active tonight. <laughs> okay. I, so if I just disappear randomly, all of a sudden, just, I mean, chalk it up to, <laughs> just chalk it up to <laughs> the skeleton that has power that is buried in ice. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, keep, what do you have for me, Corey? <laughs> well, Chris, you know, I, that was going to be one of my, you know, next questions, you know, to kind of off of Ashley's as well as, you know, at what point in time, you know, does it go from I'm investigating to find out what's on the other side versus just there to get my skivvies scared off me? You know, we went to um, a Paracon and it was a lot of, you know, people who just wanted to be scared. And it was like, no, no, I, I want to find out for sure what's going on. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I want to communicate, possibly get somebody's story. But a lot of them were there just, you know, for this for the terror factor. And it really wasn't a terror. It was kind of fun. But, you know, I got to meet a lot of great people. I've, I've never been to a Paracon. I I'm, would like to start uh, being invited to them. But you know, people have got to pay me to go to them because I live in Colombia most of the year. I can't afford to just come on my own. I, I'm on a pension. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would love to do it um, because I want to educate the public. I love that opportunity mm-hmm. to talk. And that was, this is why I'm so excited to talk to you both tonight. Yeah, I could uh, piggyback off of that. Um, so obviously you are well experienced and you've been, you've said you've traveled many you say how many 46 countries what you i mean 90, 46, 96, 96 places around the world right so based on that and all you've seen is there a place left in chris's bucket list that he really wants to be or go see that he hasn't yet god yes so many i want to see would be number Ice- one <laughs> uh iceland, Nor- iceland norway ireland um i don't know god there's so many I, I, yeah. you know, I, haven't, I haven't been to Hungary yet. Um, <laughs> I don't recommend Eastern Europe right now. I, won't I don't recommend to. Iceland right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I, well, I've, I've lived in war zones and other places, military dictatorships. So, yeah. um, I trust you. 
I, you oh. know, I, why not? <laughs> yeah. So what is your most favorite place you've ever been to? Columbia. Columbia. Hands down. I mean, don't get me wrong. The, there are many amazing and beautiful places I, that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be easier for me to single out the ones that I didn't care for. Um, right. But Columbia. Yeah, that's the one I, it's the first place I've ever wanted to settle down. It's I home. Do wanna, I, yeah. do wanna, yeah. I do want to drop back and there was a question up here. Oh, I don't want to ignore the comment section totally, but where is it? I lost the question. I'm, I'm curious, who's the Warren Files? Is that you? Who, me? Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Oh, this, this said, like, off topic question, not really what we're talking about, but it is a good question. How do I protect myself as I sleep? Right. Uh, depends on your faith. Uh, but let's just say it's the white light. As long as you believe in some higher power, the easiest thing for you to do when you're in bed at your most relaxed, and you can do this at, at night and in the morning, um, Take three deep cleansing breaths with your eyes closed, in through the nose, hold it for a few seconds, and out through the mouth. Once you're centered, keeping your eyes closed, picture a warm, white, loving light deep inside of your chest. This is the light of God that we all carry within us. Then feel that spreading throughout you, filling you up, infusing you with its love and light. And then spilling out of the pores of your skin like the most brilliant white light in the universe. You don't have to be able to envision yourself at all. Just white. Blowing away all the shadows in your house. All the shadows around you. And surrounding all of those that you love. That is incredibly powerful. Because what you are doing is you are using your free will and your faith in a ritual that focuses your clear intention to call on God's protection. You know, I always talk about prayer and how people will often say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name of the King. And if, if nothing happened, Chris. Well, yeah, but were you talking to God or were you reciting magic words? Because when Jesus said, pray like this. He didn't say, memorize these words. He said, don't ask God for a new Cadillac. Don't ask God for a big house. Ask for your daily bread. Ask that his work be done and that you are helpful to that work. Accept that God's perspective is greater than yours. That is what faith is about. It's accepting God's perspective over your own. <coughs> Sorry, I'm also a pastor. <laughs> so am I. You're right. You're right. I, that was beautiful. I've deemed myself the Pope of the First Church of Jeff the Baptist. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm legally ordained, so I can call myself yes. that. If I he want. also calls himself the Green Swamp Medium. So Yes, uh, I'm absolutely wow. the Green Swamp. I use innovative techniques in my mediumship mm. skills. No, no one That's, else uses them. That would make a great business card. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, the, dog, the dog's familia said, is spiritual communication through dreams the most normal? Yes, absolutely. When you are on the on the dream plane, on the that you are closest to the astral plane, and it is easiest for them to reach you there. When you have spirit communication in your dreams, those dreams are more real and more memorable than ordinary dreams. They have a real impact. I agree. Corey, I think we're back to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had my dog visit me in my dream because I felt <laughs> I felt so bad after she she <clears throat> passed. It was like, oh, <laughs> there you are. And then I felt better. So, you know, whether she my visited dog, me or not. <laughs> hey, my, my dog haunted me for 20 years until I got a new dog. Every single time I got sick, he would come, hit my hand with his nose, jump up on the bed, circle around, and lay down next to me. And I would feel it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mine, 
mine came to the door and you could hear her tags and she scratched at the door and it was like my husband and I were both like um the dog's been gone two days now yeah <laughs> okay so they can come back that was our first oh, yeah. experience you know yeah. oh yeah yeah um so in regards to being a pastor when you do go out and do these investigations and you know you want to do kind of a protection prayer i'm sure you have those people in with you that are are atheist or non-believers and i want to ask you how does that work you know if they're atheist and they're just saying the words like you said my husband says well it's the intent that helps and i'm going mm, no i I was raised Catholic. He was not raised anything. Um, but I'm like, no, it's, it, yes, it's the intent, but you have to have the belief there. Am I right? <laughs> um, I well, right. you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna find this answer interesting. I'm a pastor without a religion. I mean, without any religion. I am not Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm not Muslim. I'm not Jewish. I'm not Hindu. I'm not Buddhist. I'm not Umbandista. I'm nothing. And the reason for that is, I have studied them all I with some amazing masters. And to me, we're all just blind men touching little pieces of something far larger than we can get a handle on. Mm -hmm. And those religions are just showing us a glimpse of what they perceive of God. It wasn't until I accepted my own ignorance and had to take God on faith, then I found my faith. And that took years and years of searching. It, it was amazing to me how I had to accept that I was ego-driven to understand the mind of God. And when I realized that, that's when I found my faith. I gave up my ego. Yeah, I gave uh -huh. up organized religion and decided <clears throat> that yes, I believe there is a greater power out there. Do I know exactly what it is? Absolutely not. But, you know, there is something greater. And it's as not as as what I that, for me. Yeah. As long as you believe that, your your husband is closer to the to what I believe is accurate, which is it's mm -hmm. all about the intention. Mm -hmm. It's that intention to connect with something greater than you that you have faith in. But using ritual is very important because it clarifies your intention and it focuses your energy and your faith. That's mm -hmm. why all religions work. All exorcism rites work because it's about that faith and intention focused through their particular re religion and rituals. Mm -hmm. oh, Chris, are you going to make me tell my husband he was right? That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he doesn't no. have He'll no very often in his life, so I, I want him to, you know, send me a thank you note. <laughs> I will. I'll let him know. <laughs> this could yeah, be I the best I, day of his life. I thought right? I was right once, and then I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he is most of the time, but I got to give him this one now. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I actually kind of think, for me, atheist clients are the hardest to deal with because. Mm -hmm. It's it's they easier are. to work with people if they have a belief in something, you know what I'm saying. So, and a lot of times atheists are just like, man, I don't believe in anything, and and they're they're difficult to get through to, because mm -hmm. you know, until just, they experience it. Yeah. For yeah. 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 But you know, uh, it's like the old saying: um, there are no atheists in foxholes. Yeah. Uh, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I think it's usually, <laughs> it's usually the father of the house who is the last to believe that anything is happening in a house because he's the one yep. that doesn't believe. And, you know, mm -hmm. the kids and the mom are more sensitive to it. They know something's going on. We were, but, we, you, know, you and I were just talking about that with the Netflix special that came out about the, um, the devil made me do it cases that, that the oh, dad yeah. really wasn't. That was a great special. The yeah. dad really wasn't on board with what was going on with uh, the Glutzel kid. Mm -hmm. Not and at first. Not at first. And that's what you, that's what you said. Why don't you, Talk about that for a second, since you know more about that case than than what was in the documentary. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the the first forty five minutes of the special are quite good. The last fifteen, I'm not pleased with. Uh, mm -hmm. Carl Glotzel was the oldest boy. He wanted to be rich off of this case, 
And when he didn't, especially after my grandmother's first movie came out, my grandfather was already gone by then. He tried to sue my grandmother to make money off of a movie that had nothing to do with their lives or their case. And when he lost that, he started selling things from the house. He's no longer talking to anybody else in the family. And uh, yeah, he's just bitter, miserable guy. Um, he made up stories that his mother was drugging the family and yeah. they, they had brought, my grandparents had brought them out to Hollywood, which is bull crap. That was Dick Clark for anybody who remembers him. Uh, Dick Clark uh, wanted to do a TV movie called um, The Demon Murder Case with Andy Griffith mm -hmm. playing a character similar to my grandfather, but not named Ed Warren. Uh, and Kevin Bacon playing an Arnie Johnson character. It's on mm. YouTube. Um, that was the guy that brought them out to Hollywood. And that family got paid for that. And my grandparents, when the book was done, Everyone needs shared equally the the parents, the my grandparents, and the uh, writer of the book. I so I don't know what his issues are, but um, you know when money is in play, yep. then people can act very crazy. I've seen it <laughs> many times in this field. Mm -hmm. Ashley, let's go back to you. Okay. What's what's your next question? Um, I could actually probably piggyback off that again. Um, as we know, the Conjuring movies and the shows have just boomed into society. And I love your opinion as a person that was there. Do you feel like the movies are doing your grandparents justice? Or is there anything that you'd like to see in a future movie that maybe would align with more of who they were for the yeah, world? The, the movies are Hollywood fantasies. Um, right. You know, the, my grandfather, for instance, in the first movie, he supposedly does an exorcism. That never yeah. happened. Yeah. And in the first Conjuring case, uh, my grandparents were involved in that for like, I don't know, up to 10 years, I think. Maybe eight years. Mm -hmm. um, it was not a case they were particularly proud of. They made a lot of mistakes. Uh, they okay. were still learning back then. It was the 1960s. And... Um, they had only been working in the field for like 20 years. And you got to understand, they didn't have the benefit of somebody else teaching them the way I did. You know, right. I got to learn from them and then go on my own. Um, they didn't have that. So they, they were still figuring it all out. Um, the second movie, honestly, it's bull. I, I can't stand it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The Annabelle movies are complete Hollywood fantasies. The Nun doesn't exist. Right. Um, you know, the Maurice Theriel case, I would like to see that one become a real movie. The only thing mm -hmm. they did with it, though, was in the credits for The Nun, It's they reveal at the end of The Nun that the character known as Frenchie is Maurice Theriel, although mm -hmm. I think they called him something slightly different. They called him Frenchie in the movie. Yeah, but they also came up, not Maurice, but Mauricio or something. I don't remember. Mm. Um, and they actually show clips of the exorcism of Maurice in the, the credits. That right. was real. My grandfather had a heart attack during that exorcism. And I was the man standing between the archbishop and Maurice during the exorcism. My grandfather back then, you know, he was in his 50s. They weren't doing the heavy lifting at that point. They were letting the young guys do all that. And the, actually, the yeah. nun, too, the I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but one of the main characters in the nun, too, is Frenchie, which, like you said, oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was pretty good. I mean, he was, yeah, I, fantasy I enjoyed good, it. But yeah, it was good. exactly. I, yeah. I'm, I'm a little disappointed to hear that yeah. these movies aren't documentaries. I always thought they were. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to see it, but I like the I like the first Annabelle movie as a as a movie as a horror mm -hmm. film. Yeah. Um, another one was uh, the Haunting in Connecticut. That was actually my case. My grandparents oh, wow. gave it to me. Uh, I lived in that haunted funeral home for nine and a half weeks every single night, and uh, that was a bad case. But the movie and the book in a dark place are absolute garbage. 
Yep. So, yeah, I would love it to see it done correctly. There was a documentary called A Haunting in Connecticut on Discovery Channel. It was <laughs> available on YouTube a few years ago. I don't know if it still is. That was quite good. Mm-hmm. I think there's a there's also an episode where the Snedekers were on. It mm-hmm. was uh, one of the one of the old talk shows, the daytime talk shows from back in the day. Like it wasn't Jerry Springer, but one of those. No, it was Sally Jesse Raphael. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go, a, you can find that on YouTube. Everybody should go watch that. That was a really yeah, I good saw video. that. There, I, I just found, my... I'm, I'm sorry, I, I no. but I was on Geraldo uh, when okay. Ghostbusters 2 came out with Carmen Snedeker, as well as um, another woman that I had worked on a poltergeist case in Tewksbury, Massachusetts. Back then, I you know, I wasn't very good at protecting people from the public as I am today. Um, and I just found out that my father had a videotape of that episode. So I have it with me. I have to figure out a way to get it transferred digitally and then we can upload it. Oh yeah. We got it. It's oh, There's a, there's a service that'll do that. Remind me to talk to you about that. Cause I, yeah, I'd definitely be curious as, as to seeing that. Um, uh, first of all, I want to see the best comment. I'm going to display this that everybody, this is now <laughs> an official request that people want to see a real documentary about the Green Swamp Medium. So I think we're going to have to make that happen. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be the host and I'll interview you when we... Oh, this is, this, this is going to be from my side. This is, uh, what, oh, what's it called? A, a, a damn autobiography. It'll be based on that. So it'll be great. <laughs> and I, I, got, I do have to update everybody. According to Spirit Talker, I'm pretty much screwed. Um, there's <laughs> bodies buried outside. There's... There's oh wow! A couple of them here. They're trapped here. Jesus is involved somehow. Oh, uh, now you're on an FBI watch list. She's uh-huh. gonna, yeah. Can she, we come investigate that house, please? <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. over there. And she's gonna harm me. Like I'm, I'm pretty well screwed. Can 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 we just now let everyone know that th- these apps are absolute garbage? <laughs> um, what are you talking about? Folks, why why don't you believe this? <laughs> <laughs> well, in theory, energy manipulation is the simplest thing a spirit can do, but it doesn't need an application to do it. That's AI generating crap to titillate and excite people. And then, you know, YouTubers use it to get hits and likes and clicks and make money off of their videos. So, yeah, please. Yeah, there's a lot. You there's cannot a lot of- download an EMF reader on your phone. Your phone doesn't have the capability to do that. Yep. Yeah, I, I did this, like I said last night in the green room before we started the show. Um, for the last few nights, I've just let this run for 10 minutes, just not ask questions and, and blah, blah, blah. But last night I wrote down, so it would it would say something. And then I wrote down two or three questions that if I were investigating and believed in this app that I would ask. And like what I say, seven out of 10 times, a response was relevant to one of my questions which then leads to another question that's then relevant. It's like these apps, if you use them, can drive you, they can drive your investigation and you never want that to happen. So, exactly. And it's, you know, these, these are garbage, but they're, they're fun to watch. So I think we're, I think we're back to Corey, right? Yes. Yeah. So Chris, um, I went to the Virginia city cemetery, um, Virginia city, Nevada is an old mining town. Um, known for gold and silver Mm -hmm. never go into the museum that shows you where all the mines are at because you're going to come out with the fear that the mountain's just going to collapse it looks like swiss cheese um but i we went into the cemetery one day and we were sitting there and all of a sudden i the only way i can explain it is i zoned out and i was on the main street in virginia city with a stagecoach coming towards me. There were women in period dress walking by. And then I, for whatever reason, I snapped out of it. And at that point in time, I had my recorder in my hand and it locked up. I had to take the batteries out to get it restarted. It just at that moment. So is, is the veil thin enough that stuff like that could happen? Or do you feel that it would be a spirit passing through with those memories? Either, 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 either explanation is possible because I have friends in Canada who had an ex- a similar experience where they were investigating with their team 
two of them went down in the basement, including my friend. And they could hear everyone moving around the house for, for an hour. And then the basement door opened. And then it closed by itself and footsteps went upstairs, but they didn't see anyone. And when they went back upstairs, everybody was like, where have you been? We looked all over. So we were down in the basement. I said, we went down in the basement. You weren't there. They had slipped into another, a side dimension, if you will. At least that's the only explanation I can come up with. Yeah. Um, my question is, when it happened to you, could you smell? Could you feel it? You know? Was it real yes. or was it a vision? It, it hovered somewhere in between. I hate to say that, but it did. You know, I'm sitting in the middle of the cemetery. It's Nevada. We have a lot of dirt. So the, the smell of the dirt and, the, you know, the warmth of the air was already there. So I'm going to go ahead and say it was a vision, you know, and I'm about as psychic as a carrot so it you know it wasn't like you know i was having a medium moment um but it, yeah i i'm gonna go with vision because i can't say that it was real because all everything that was happening around me in this vision was also happening around me just sitting in the cemetery so i just I'm not sure i understand that last part i mean you were still aware of the cemetery uh, we were sitting in the cemetery. I, I wasn't aware of the cemetery when I was having that vision. Okay. All right. But yeah, um, I don't know. That's my answer. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. And, but it could be either or somebody yeah. passing through who gave it to me and it was a vision that they had or a slip of the veil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Either one. As, as the Green Swamp Medium, we'll be doing some classes about that here that we're charging ninety nine ninety five for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's that's coming in the future. <laughs> uh, just, uh, and and I mean no disrespect to mediums. I have lots of medium friends. They know that they know the whole joke behind this. So I don't want the mediums, you know, filling up my inbox with hate mail, <laughs> saying I'm disrespectful. So, um, hey, Jeff. By the way, we have that um, lecture. That what is it? Three hour lecture I did which, in New Zealand last year. I have yet to see that. Really? I sent yes. you the link. Did you? Ages ago. Um, but okay. Um, I'll look for it again. Okay. But uh, I was thinking if people want to learn more about the, the paranormal, learn more about individual cases of my grandparents and myself, uh, that lecture is a good one. And we do want to start making... Uh, money to support the foundation, that would be a way for us to do it by, you know, selling copies of it for $25, mm -hmm. digital copies. I yeah, mean, we have to make sure that they can't be redistributed. Yeah. That's, that's, we'll talk about that off the, off the air. Cause that's, that's a, yeah, it's a business topic. <laughs> um, so I just, uh, I just wanted to gauge anyone's interest while we, they were listening. Yeah, no, it's, there's, I, I, I will say I really want to focus on building up our YouTube channel and I want to put a lot more educational content on there. Um, yeah. We do have, I think we have 40,000 subs, but we don't utilize that channel as like we should. So I've talked to a couple people and we're going to start really, really starting to put out content. I don't know if people know this either too, and I'm just going to, I guess, plug our YouTube channel for a minute. But we have, we have, um, we shut down our Patreon page. So we started to put some of the content that was on Patreon, we've, we've put it on YouTube. And one of the things that we're featuring on there right now is the audio book, The Demonologist. So Chris will read the chapter and then give his commentary as the next episode and then read the next chapter and so forth. So that's something. Which means I got to get back to doing that uh, yep. to finish it. <laughs> yep. I haven't uh, caught up loading to where we're, where we stopped, but yeah. Great. And also um, Instagram, Warren Files has finally been vitalized and I'm using that on a regular basis now to keep in touch with people, to communicate with people. I am very easy to get a hold of folks. Anybody who wants to can. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not a prima donna. 
Uh, I'm just a guy. So if you've got something you need to ask, ask me. Yeah, and probably the best way to get a hold of you directly is to is to hit up your Facebook profile, Chris McKinnell, right? Yeah, or or Warren Files uh, Instagram now. Okay. I use both okay. equally. Yeah, I know because I had to turn the notifications off because they were driving me nuts. <laughs> he did a he did a couple events. Um, in where you were in Brazil, right? Yeah, in Sao Paulo. God, that weekend, that Instagram, those notifications in the messenger went off every 30 seconds for like four days. It was, I was going crazy. Yeah. So I had to figure out how to turn it off. So, uh, Ashley, I think we're back up to you. With the question. Yeah, we're, we're doing quite good. Yeah. So we spoke a little bit ago, and I'm sorry to backtrack, but just to get your opinion. Um, obviously, everybody agrees that the apps suck. So let's say you want to investigate. And this is going back your teaching. Let's, what would you say? And there's tons of equipment now on this today that are expensive down to, you know, affordable. What is your favorite? Like, what what is your go-to? Uh, my iPad. Okay. I, I like don't for- I don't I don't use ghost boxes or anything. Um, mm-hmm. I am not a gadget guy. I I've got plenty of gadget people in the foundation uh, mm-hmm. who love them. I can tell you there is only one technique I find to be at all reputable. That's mm-hmm. the Estes method. Can, can uh, I add to that? Let me let me pause you just for one second. I don't want to interrupt, but I don't want to forget to say this. We uh, so a lot of us. You said a lot of our members like these these pieces of equipment, stuff like that, on ghost hunts. Not like I'm not going to break out the cat balls in a residential Mm -hmm. case and say, yeah, you have a bad spirit in your house because the cat moles lit up. So none of our investigators use that type of equipment for residential investigations. There's a, Mm -hmm. there's a definite difference on what we use for that versus what we use to go to a ghost hunt at a location. Yeah. So sorry, Chris, Um, I just had to interject that. No, no, that's no, thank you. Cause I was trying to think of the cat balls uh, as a thing to say, you know, terrible. Also the stick figure uh, camera, another thing that you never use. Yeah. A lot of false crap. EMF mm-hmm. readers are fine if you sh- are able to shut down the power in the entire house, unless you're actually an electrician and you're trying to find out if there's strong electrical currents, like maybe next to the headboard of the mm-hmm. bed where the people have been having uh, visions, because that's a good explanation. And maybe you just have to move the bed across the room. That actually a happened. Natural explanation. That actually coming. happened on an investigation that that mm-hmm. I did. Is this this girl was seeing crazy stuff like demonic witches? All this, her, the EMF where she laid her head at night was a thirty milligauss, which is mm-hmm. crazy high. So mm-hmm. she was subject to that all freaking night long. So mm. yeah, Ghost Hunters yeah. did a episode on that one where they took the EMF and they were like, wow this is mm-hmm. not okay and that's probably what's causing her to see things so yeah, it's bad for your health too exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, me personally i always just i'm basic so i take a recorder and my camera that's all i yeah. use that's what that, I that use. me too my, my that's why i use the ipad it's got both um i i do my interviews recording them on there <laughs> I take my photos on there, my video on there, and that's it. I'm I'm done. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe a, a you know a, a, ca- a camera on my phone. Now that I mm-hmm. finally have a phone. Um, but the Estes method for the people who don't know what that is, it's a spirit box with headphones, um, basically, and one person is listening. They may not even be in the same room as the questioner, but basically, they cannot hear the questioner with the headphones on somebody else is asking the spirit questions and the person with the spirit box is just shouting out answers that gets rid of any bias that comes from this you can hear two different things from the same exact noise depending on what you think you want or want to hear so you have to be very careful about that and that's why I like the Estes method. Like I said, these apps and things like the Ovulus and stuff like that that have programmed words, I, every time I watch people use them, the responses drive the, the questioning. It's yeah. never, 
I guess if you were to really test this app or test the Ovulus, you would have a list of questions that you have written before you even stepped into a place. You stick to that list and that's it. You know, exactly. then, then if you get an intelligent response to random, que- I mean, it might be something to, to look into. Cause I have had a couple instances where the Ovulus were like, okay, I was ready to throw this thing in the garbage, but why did it say story? when we were right in front of a headstone and the family's name was story and it was the mom and it said mama. So, I mean, that's the only time I've ever seen the ovulus actually like, okay, I'm not going to throw you away yet. <laughs> you know? yeah. There's um, there's a guy that sells spirit boxes online for like $4,000. They're basically broken radios <laughs> and he's a con man. He, uh, which one takes, <laughs> I can't remember his name, but he's is got it, rabid followers. Is it Huff? He, he, Yes. 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 That guy. That guy makes me sick. Within, he makes me sick. He takes celebrities' minutes, voices yeah. of people who died, and he distorts them, and then yep. plays them as though he's actually having conversations with my grandparents, for instance. Yep. And I, I know for a fact he wasn't talking to them. Yeah. Uh, my grandmother appears to me regularly, so I, you know, she, she, I talk to her. Yeah, there's there's big financial motivation for people to fake that stuff on YouTube. I mean, yeah. you, you can really, if you know what you're doing and you have a, a, a lot of subscribers and a lot of views and all that stuff, you can really make a lot of money doing YouTube stuff. Yeah. And and he does make a lot of money on YouTube because his, yeah. his followers love him. <clears throat> all right. I think we're, we're back Corey. with Corey. Yes. Yeah. So, Chris what's the worst case that you've seen that you've thought, you know what, you people need to move and get out of here because there's not a heck of a lot can be done. Yeah, there, there have been cases like that, but the truth is most of the time it's the people, it's not the place. And even running isn't going to solve the problem. Because, for instance, the Lutzes in Amityville, it followed them when they left. It wasn't as though they had an easy time afterward. They didn't. Um, it took a long time for them to get together. I, I met them. They, they were very real, very good people. Um, I have found that fear is the enemy and that once people can overcome their fear of what they're dealing with, then they can really start to fight back and overcome it. But it, it takes that faith and the willingness to give up your fear. Most of us are just afraid because we're ignorant of what we're dealing with. You know, we hear footsteps or something flies across the room and we think, oh my God, I'm under attack. Well, did it hit you or is it just trying to get your attention? Mm-hmm. You know, is it something just somebody stroked your hair in the middle of the night? How do you know that wasn't your grandmother letting you know that she's there watching over you? You know, don't jump to the conclusion that it's evil. Base it on the outcome, not on your fear. Yeah, I remember your grandmother saying that in something I was watching of, you know, just because something gets thrown across the room does not mean that it's evil or it's just, you know, they're trying to get your attention. They have something to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. My grandmother actually loves the foundation. She helped me found it and she appears to an awful lot of the foundation members. Um, She's really proud of us, uh, which makes me very happy. She's, she likes the work we're doing. Yeah. it, 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 and that's the thing too. I think one of the things I'm going back to something you said earlier, um, you know, some of the mistakes and you've told me this too, maybe off air, some of the mistakes that your grandparents made and that you've made in the past. And I think the biggest one that you always acknowledge is the fact of client anonymity. Um, a Was lot what? of client and not anonymity. Yes. Is you, you've said that a lot of the cases that your grandparents handled that went public, yeah. really really caused a lot of harm to the and it wasn't they didn't intentionally cause harm to people or anything like that it was you know you know it wasn't it's not good to go public you don't right. want it's probably not as it's not as bad nowadays 
because I mean, there's paranormal stuff all over. Not saying we want to put our clients' names out there and stuff like that, but it's not. It's more accepted now than it was then. I mean, you were a freak if you had a haunted house back then. I mean, you were crazy. And in small towns people. today, you're yeah. still treated like a yeah. pariah if mm -hmm. they, you know, somebody starts thinking, oh, they think they've got ghosts in their house. Yep. You know, the neighbors aren't going to be happy about the resale value of the neighborhood or anything else. Yep. Um, so, no, we, we <coughs> do not ever publicize our cases. You know, we'll talk about cases in general mm -hmm. and talk about particular cases without revealing any personal information so that we get educate educate the public but we won't reveal anything that could let the family be exposed you well know, your I grandparents are normal uh social workers not investigators well your grandparents did that um investigation on the adopted um girl uh God, way back when oh, I can't remember. In, in Lindley Street, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Yes, in 72 or yes. Three. and that backfired on them so badly. Oh. And I just felt so bad. I read the book and I just felt so bad at, you know, it's like it just became a circus, it sounds like. Oh, it was, it was terrible. And, they, and then they the police couldn't deal with it. I mean, they experienced the phenomena and everything else, but... Lindley Street still there. The the house is still there. It's this tiny, itty bitty little place, and it it's right near the local hospital, and it's a bunch of back streets. And there were thousands and thousands of cars there, locking it up so nobody could get to the hospital, nobody could get to work, nobody could go anywhere. And the police just finally just said, "No, this is a hoax. This is bullcrap." And you know, everybody. Even though home. they saw, even though they <laughs> saw what they saw at first, they denied it later. Yeah. You know, and that poor girl didn't get the help that she needed. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely going public can be a bad idea for sure. So, yeah. I think uh, we're going to try to wrap it up. We try and keep this to about an hour. So let's let's go ahead and Ashley, um, go ahead and ask one more question, and then we'll get back to Corey. Okay. Well, um, this has been amazing. So I want to end my questions with, okay, um, the like the Warren Foundation seems amazing. So is there anything upcoming? Like what's the goals for, let's say, the future next five years? Do you have anything that you're hoping to accomplish there? Oh, quite a bit in the next five years. I, I'm 59 years old, so mm -hmm. I want to get it all done as quickly as possible. Um, yeah. I want to finish my autobiography uh, and mm -hmm. get that out there so that I can start uh, educating people better. And we're working on a, a TV series that will be education based, not fear based. Nice. and will not be a haunting of the week kind of crap. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working on a spiritual retreat and paranormal education center in Columbia that will be open to the world. Um, wow. It's a place where people can really learn about the paranormal, but also learn how to overcome their fears and take control of their lives. Um, as I said, I'm going to be starting to do more paracons so I can get out there and publicize the foundation more. Because the truth is, we need your help, everyone, in getting the word out there about the foundation. We're, we've got a following, but mm -hmm. we're not reaching the actual people who need help. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that matter. Don't get me wrong. Right. I love you all, you know, mm -hmm. but we need to reach those in need. Right. So well, that's, you know, that, that's the basics. Um, mm -hmm. Expanding, continuing the good ethics that we promote and um, hopefully becoming a force, a greater force for good in the world. And that's, you know, as a manager of the foundation, I, I'll answer that question as well. I mean, it's, we need in order to get the word out, people need to know who we are. And for right. people to know who we are, we have to put out good content. But you can't sell out and you can't put out the same crap that everybody else is doing. So it's kind of a, we're really, one of my personal goals is to to find content that is entertaining and educational and, right. and not a sellout in any way because I won't, I won't go do an investigation and use a cell phone app just to get content for our YouTube channel. I, I, right. And if, no. and if we stick to, the, to where we're at, in our status in the paranormal community, because I won't do that. Well, then you know we'll have to find a different way, or we'll just stay where we're at. Because I I won't I won't sell out. 
and no. the members that we have are of the same mindset you know no one is every the people that are in this foundation are in it to help people that's why most of them aren't even known most of the members it's because their sole purpose is to help people and that's it yeah but we've you know as managers and chris we we try we have to try and get something out to get noticed so that we can help more people if that makes sense yes Corey, you got you one know, last one for us? I, I don't. Ashley um, covered the question that I was going to ask. She's so brilliant. Um, but I just thank you for the opportunity. And Chris, it was amazing to speak with you and and hear, you know, <coughs> about your experiences and your and get your knowledge. I mean, that's the big one is getting your knowledge. You know, I'm I'm so, I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher, but I'm a student. And I'll always be a student. I'm not an expert. Nobody is. It, what I would have told you five years ago, it could be quite different from what I'm going to say five years from now. Um, it all depends on what evidence I gather, because this is a field that is always adapting and growing. And it has to. It's not a religion. It can't be treated as a religion. Um, that's why I don't like the idea of demonology at all, because that's always from one religious perspective. If people think I'm a demonologist, then perhaps perhaps I am, but then I'm the only one that exists as far as I know, because I do it from a multicultural, multi-denominational perspective. And I don't know anybody else out there who's doing that. Um, but then again, I don't believe in demons per se. Um, you know, I, no, I know the history of how they were created and where they come from and everything else and the evolution of all of that. And it, it's fascinating. It's extraordinary uh, to see that evolution. Um, but it's not what people think as a religion and it shouldn't be treated that way. Yeah, I'll fight you on that, but that's for a different show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, I guess I got to give a spirit talker update here just real quick before we end the show. So apparently Ryan was attacked with a machete. Um, Poor Ryan. Man, there's Frank is here with us tonight. Patricia, Ryan's here. Sarah, we, just, we got a packed house here. You have a lot of machete attacks in uh, Ohio? Well, apparently we do. I just didn't hear about them until tonight. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, no, we don't actually. So that's the short answer. So, um, yeah, again, I, this was, I'm going to do this again. I think this was really cool to have, you know, people that follow the page. You, Ashley and Corey, you guys were both fantastic. You were, like I said, this was either going to be the best idea I had or the absolute worst. And this was a very, very good idea based on you two being, being guests on the show. You guys were fantastic. Yeah, I loved it. Very cool. yeah, I, thank was, you, ladies. You, you were both absolutely wonderful. I, I'm sorry that we lost our other... Yeah, I know. Um, I'm interviewer before we started, but um, thank you so much. You know, we can have this again with uh, new people and new perspectives. I would yeah. love to do this. Yep, we'll mm -hmm. definitely do this again. So, um, I guess we'll outro with everybody. Remember that next week we're going to have Cindy Kaza on. Um, most people that follow anything paranormal on TV or anything like that know that she is a, a very, very good. She's a legit psychic medium, too. She's not I'm not going to mm -hmm. classify her as a TV psychic medium, but she is very well known on the TV shows. But she offers a lot of classes. Um, she's the real deal. So we're looking forward to that, to having her on next week. And this is it's, it's always weird how you end this because you click end stream and there's this awkward just wait so i'm going to ask you ladies to stay on and chris stay on just for one second i'm going to try and end this hey thank and you everyone for coming on thank you for watching and for your support